How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, it is Wednesday here on this program, and you know what that means? I'm back! I'm here today! I was gone yesterday. I don't know what Mike did or didn't tell you, but uh, it's a long story. But the story continues today as my children have given me their illness. Stricken I am here today. But damn it, I'm here for you all. And I got a lot to talk about here today. And we've got a special co-host who will be joining us in the next segment. Jim Valley is returning here to the program today. We're going to see how Jim Valley is doing. We'll talk all of the news. And boy, we got plenty of news to talk about here today. I wasn't here yesterday. I think Mike got all of the news. I'm going to let him... He handled the Raw report. I don't think I need to do it again. But I can do the NXT 2.0 report today because a lot of stuff happening on that show. And it was the go-home show for the WrestleMania weekend. And so, uh, yeah, we'll get into that here today. AEW is tonight as well for Dynamite. And I have a lot to say uh, when it as it pertains to NXT and an article that uh, came out on ESPN, the WWE, talking about their uh, NIL deals and everything. I mean, I, it's not like I haven't talked about this before, but I watched NXT last night and I read this article and I was like, holy smokes, whatever. Not my company, but we'll tell you about that here today. Shane McMahon is going to be around for WrestleMania. I know now everybody's expecting that he is going to be the the opponent of Seth Rollins. And hey, listen, till it happens, nothing is official. But uh, I do expect it's still Seth Rollins versus Cody at WrestleMania. But it is interesting that the the original Seth Rollins opponent for WrestleMania was Shane McMahon. We've got Raw ratings, showed it a huge number for the go-home show on Monday night. And uh, a bunch of other stuff as well. There's so much to get into. We won't get into all of it, but you know what? We're going to try. So back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back to the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi not joining us here today. Instead, we have Jim Valley. And Jim, I got to ask you a couple of questions, but then I had the epiphany to end all epiphanies, the greatest idea I've ever had in my lifetime. But I'm first, something. yeah, how are you, Jim? What's going I'm on? I'm great. I'm fantastic. Yes. It's great to be back. I've missed everybody. What's going on? Well, let me just start. It's been so long since I've been on the show. I have literally been waiting years to show you this. As people might remember, I would show up at your house in the studio there with you. Yes. Pre-COVID. And for some reason, you started noticing that I was wearing different T-shirts all the time. Yes. And you didn't wear the up, same shirt every day. It was weird. And you gave me the name Shirty V. Based on member Chad Gable. That's right. Shorty V. Yes, yeah, Shorty V. That's how long it's been. And I've had this shirt literally waiting for years for you, Brian. And here it is. You ready? Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. Just for you. It's the Roddy Piper All Out of Bubble Gum John Nada They Live t shirt. Wow. Just for you. Wow. Yeah. You know, I remember meeting Roddy once and he was all out of bubble gum. Right. That was a rough time. Out of a lot of things. Yes. So, so Jim, uh, I mean, can we tell people what today is all about, or, or are we just going to... Uh, no, we can talk about whatever you want. Well, are, are you uh, thinking of making a big comeback here Saturdays? So here's what I'm thinking. All I right. think that uh, as far as my voice goes, honestly, it was never great. And, and I appreciate the YouTube comments for telling me that. But, you know, this is probably about as good as it's going to get. And I think my lung capacity is enough that I'm not taking breaths constantly. Of course, I did that before anyway. But I'm going to try this, see how this feels. And if this works, then let's uh, let's come back. And if there's a better time than WrestleMania, it just feels like if this is as good as it's going to get, then this is the time to make the move when everything's happening. So you're thinking about this coming Saturday, WrestleMania Saturday, making a big return to the Byline Airwaves? If Byline has the people and wow. we have the technology, I have been rebuilt. Let's let's make it happen, Captain. Well, we'll see what I can figure out during the break right here. I probably should ask. But again, huh? if if this sounds terrible to people, I don't want to do it. I'll just, you know. Thank oh, who you cares right. about the people, Jim? I care. Don't listen to these nerds, I especially the ones on the YouTube chat. 
Ignore them. They bought my T-shirts. They donated to my GoFundMe. No, I love the the Empire. Well, listen, I got to get into my idea here, Jim. We can chit chat more later. I was just thinking about this during the break. Is it OnlyFans? Uh, No. So listen, I'm going to start by reading this article. Shane McMahon will be in Dallas for WrestleMania weekend, according to a report. PW Insider reports WWE is bringing McMahon in for the entire Mania weekend, his first time back with the company since being phased out following this year's Royal Rumble event. The report does not state whether or not there are creative plans for McMahon, or even if he will appear on either night of WrestleMania, just that he will be in town and is being brought in by WWE. McMahon was originally penciled in for a WrestleMania bout against Seth Rollins, and a spot in the Elimination Chamber match in Saudi Arabia in February, but was sent away after unprofessional conduct at the Royal Rumble, including talking down to producer Jamie Noble, according to our reporting. In the February 7th edition of The Observer, Dave wrote, Every single story we've heard multiple, multiplied many times over. He was unprofessional, the likes of which left VKM no options but to fire him. And there's a whole bunch more here you can read on the front page of WrestlingObserver.com. But boy, did this ever get me thinking. And this is not a a finished idea because I literally just came up with it during the break. But I started thinking about this a little bit. So what do we know? Well, we know that Seth Rollins does not have an opponent for WrestleMania. We know that the original opponent for Seth Rollins was going to be Shane McMahon. We know that Shane McMahon was, I don't know if fired is the right word but he was sent home all plans for shane mcmahon were out the window they were not going to do anything with him he was gone and uh, then we also know that uh, cody left aew and uh, it is believed that cody is signed sealed and delivered with wwe and at least as of uh, several days ago the plans were still that it was going to be cody versus seth rollins at wrestlemania so this is all we got all this that's where we are when this story came out so, of course, when this story broke that Shane is, uh, essentially what's happened is they bought plane tickets for Shane McMahon. We don't know anything other than that. We just know that he's got tickets to go to uh, to Dallas. So, this, of course, got everyone thinking, oh, my God, can you imagine? Maybe the thing with Cody fell through, and it's actually going to be Shane McMahon versus Seth Rollins. And then, you know, they're thinking about, can you imagine if, like, Seth is in the ring and everyone's chanting Cody's name? And then they hit Shane McMahon's music, and it's actually Shane McMahon versus Cody. And I- I'm trying to imagine what the the Dallas crowd would do if that was the actual match. If if that's you know they're all expecting one match and they get the other one, it'd be like an incredible heat and everything like that. Then I was thinking, you know, maybe they could do for heat is they just play Shane's music, but that's like Cody's new theme song. And you know, Cody he's got signed from AEW, so he's got all this money, money, money. And then I thought, you know what? The storyline can be that Shane, they they bring they bring Seth down to the ring. They do in fact hit Shane McMahon's music. Shane McMahon starts coming down to the ring. The place is furious because it's Shane McMahon. And then of course Shane grabs the mic and announces that he is in fact brought in the AEW EVP. It would be just like in 2001 when Vince was going to announce that he bought World Championship Wrestling. But in the storyline, Shane showed up and he had purchased World Championship Wrestling. It would be playing off that Tony Khan promo they did a few weeks ago where Tony said, uh, you know, I purchased uh, Ring of Honor. It wasn't Shane. Because that was playing off 2001. Well, it turns out in storyline, Shane McMahon is so angry that he was sent home from the Royal Rumble and fired that he went out and he has started his own group. And the first signee is Cody. And him and Cody are showing up to invade. And, of course, they beat Seth Rollins and they beat him down. And, uh, you know, we'd have to get some other folks to, uh, some former AEW folks to show up in this, uh, this deal. But I think there's a way that you could make this work. I don't think at all that they're going to do it, but I just started thinking about it during the break when everyone was thinking about, oh, I'd be so mad if they played Shane's music. Oh, they'd be furious if it was Shane versus Seth instead. So I think that there's a way that this could be done. You're missing a key part. What is that, Jim? That's why my face just turned white. How often has WWE in the past used a surrogate character to make fun of somebody else? 
Well, I mean, they actually they so, actually did it with Robert Stone in NXT when for a while he I'm was supposed saying. to be Tony Khan. So Shane McMahon becomes Tony Khan, and they're going to position him like a money mark and doing, you know, hiring him, just whatever stereotypes you want to say about the perception of Tony Khan as the owner of AEW that they may have. And suddenly, Shane McMahon epitomizes what they want people to think of Tony Khan and becomes that character. So Shane McMahon is playing the role of Tony Khan, bringing yes. in an executive vice president from the outside to take out all these WWE and stars. He's an, he's, for, he's an idiot with his money, and he hires the wrong people, and the people he hires are, are like comedy people. I'm just These are just things that are coming off the top of my head. Probably people in the Twitch chat could think of ideas like that, but they would use Shane McMahon to mock Tony Khan, and he would be... De facto Tony Khan. Man, we'll see what happens on. Uh, I hope not. Weekend, I think but... here's what I think. I think Shane is just going to be the referee. He'll either be the referee for um, Pat McAfee, uh, his match, or he'll be the referee for Seth's match. And that way, Seth can beat Cody because you got a cheating ref, or McAfee can lose because the McMahon screwed him out of uh, his match with Austin Theory. Well, they have announced, uh, by the way, uh, it's official, the main event of night one is going to be the KO show. We talked about this a couple of days ago. And, Question. Uh, yeah. Have I missed something? I thought it was very weird how in his go-home Well, promo, hold that thought. Hold that thought, Jim. We're actually up against the break. I think there's more to the main event than meets the eye. Stand by. We'll talk more. Observer Live. All right. What's your question, Jim Valley? Here on Observer Live. Uh, what? Oh, sorry. I was just watching Hiromu Takahashi sleeping at Corican Hall. Sorry about that. Um, so here's my thought on the go home promo by Roman Reigns on Raw. I thought it was very odd that he mentioned Steve Austin. Why would he mention Steve Austin? There's no reason to mention. Well, Roman Steve did or Brock did. Roman did. Hmm. And it just seemed very odd to me that he would do that. And I'm wondering, much like this show is a test for me, is WrestleMania and the KO show a test for Steve Austin? And maybe if Rock isn't available for LA, what other big match does Roman have? Or if this is the test, maybe we do. SummerSlam. Have you heard anything like that with Steve Austin? Zero. It just, seemed, it just seemed really odd that he would mention Steve Austin for no reason. I, I, I would be. I mean, listen, Steve Austin at this point, and I, I suppose maybe they could uh, do the angle to set up a match. But I mean, if I, if, if a, if a weapon were put to a, uh, a tender part of my body, and I was asked, do you or do you not think your life is on the line? that Steve Austin is going to do a match on Sunday. If my life were on the line, I'd say, nah, they're just going to do the KO show. Do I think it's possible that they uh, shoot an angle to do a match on Sunday? Yes. But I do think that, you know, we had, we've been talking about this for a while. They wanted Steve Austin to do a wrestling match with Kevin Owens. And it was all up to Steve Austin what he was going to do. And my my big, my big clue here is when Steve Austin did the promo accepting that he was going to be on the KO show, he actually said in his promo, you can call this a confrontation, a brawl, a match, whatever you want to call it. That to me was him acknowledging that, you know, this is going to be your physical thing, but you guys ain't getting a match. And I just have this, like, it's... it's them relying on on Rock showing up next year to to do WrestleMania, that to me is a big enough gamble. And if you can't get the Rock, I mean, this is an even bigger ang gamble with Stone Cold. Like he doesn't even seem he he doesn't appear committed now to even doing a short match with Kevin Owens. So I I would be very very surprised if he'd said to them, you know, well let's uh let's 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 pencil it in for next year because to me. If he's even willing for them to pencil it in for next year, then he would do like a three-minute match with Kevin Owens 
or even, you know, you brawl or whatever, you do some punches, you go into the concourse, you do some punches there, you punch your way back to the ring, you know, Kevin Owens goes for the stunner, whatever, you reverse in your own stunner, pin him. I mean, I'm sure Steve Austin could do that, but it looks like he's not even willing to do that, so... I think it was just coincidence. I think they probably told everybody, you know, make sure you mention that Steve Austin's going to be at WrestleMania because we're only at 60,000 tickets for one of these nights. That's my guess. You may be right. I just just thought it was odd that Roman would mention him. Well, the one thing I will say about Raw is that people are very interested in this go-home show for WrestleMania. The go-home show, 1.98 million viewers, a .55 in 18 to 49. The first two hours topped 2 million viewers, although they did have a fairly significant third-hour drop. Male 18 to 49 were almost identical to the week before. But for whatever reason, female numbers up 34% from last week. An extra 70,000 women tuned in this week. I don't know why. Were they anticipating proposals in the 24-7 segment? Raw did a .41 in 18-49 to 49, to .31 for a uh, women's basketball game. There was an NCAA women's basketball tournament game on ESPN that for whatever reason the women chose to watch Raw in larger numbers in this women's basketball game. Raw was second in women 18 to 49 below uh behind below deck. Three hours. 2.05 million viewers in the first hour. 2.10 million viewers in the second hour. And then the giant plunged 1.79 million viewers in the third hour. So these were the best raw numbers. I think it was since last August. So You know, people are interested in seeing what's on the WrestleMania card. What are the big angles? I mean, hopefully the Raw after WrestleMania does very well. And I guess we'll see. I don't think it's the beginning of a boom period here. But those are some good numbers. I hope they have something big planned for after WrestleMania. And it's not just, hey, look, here's the same card, but now we're hitting people with sticks at Extreme Rules. It's always that. It used to be WrestleMania was the end of the year, and then it became the middle, and it was like, let's rehash the matches we already rehashed. And if they want to keep these numbers up, they've got to have something exciting and new and compelling. And hopefully Cody and whatever they have next, you know, Drew McIntyre for SummerSlam, whatever happens, they have something big. We've got Dynamite coming up tonight with... uh... We got John Moxley versus Jay Lethal, which I presume is going to continue the Jay Lethal losing streak as he gets more and more frustrated with being unable to win the big ones. Darby Allen versus Andrade, which they've actually been setting up for quite a while. FTR faces the Gun Club, which is uh, furthering the FTR babyface turn. We've got a Women's Owen Hart Foundation tournament qualifying match. You have to win a qualifying match to be in a tournament. As opposed to just having a larger tournament. Bunny will be facing a new AEW signee. Is it the former Tony Storm? Is it Athena, the former Ember Moon? Or is it somebody else? And uh, just added, and I'm sure you can probably all figure out why, based on the Academy Awards this past weekend, CM Punk will be facing Max Caster, who will have a pre-match rap. Can't wait to hear that one. I wonder what he's going to rap about. I'm sure he's going to rhyme rap with something would be my guess. But we'll see. What rhymes with Smith and Rock? I don't know. We can easily Everything. rhyme slap. Yeah. So anyway, that's the uh, AW show tonight. Of course, last night we had NXT 2.0. Uh, I can talk about that after the break. Did you see the show, Jim? I did. Yeah. I did. Well, uh, we'll get to the review, but first off, we do have the full lineup for the show that they've got coming up over WrestleMania weekend, and uh, this is the show that, for me and Jim, airs at 9 a.m. Saturday on WrestleMania Saturday. So no, I will not be watching this show live, because I'm going to be spending the morning with my family, because I'm spending zero afternoon or evening with my family. 
So we got Dolph Ziggler versus Braun Breaker for the NXT title. We got Imperium versus the Creed Brothers versus MSK for the NXT Tag Team titles. Mandy Rose versus Cora Jade. Um, it's Mandy Rose, Cora Jade. Thought, this is an Io old Shirai. card. It's a four-way now. Yeah, it's a four-way. Io Shirai and uh, Kaylee Ray also in that match. Yeah. Whoever wrote the uh, front page article, fix that one. Tommaso Ciampa and Tony D'Angelo, L.A. Knight versus Gunter, Carmelo, Santos Escobar, Grayson Waller, Solo Sokoa, Cameron Grimes in a ladder match for the NXT North American title. And do you remember when uh, Io Shirai and Kaylee Ray won that women's Dusty? And they won the women's Dusty, and uh, traditionally they should be getting a tag team championship match. And instead... And it's actually, it makes sense in storyline because in storyline, nobody wanted to be in this tournament. Like, everybody was desperate to find partners and nobody wanted to be in the tournament. So in storyline, they finally got enough women to do a small tournament. And then the two women that win, Io and Kaylee, who didn't want to be in the tournament, now they don't want the tag team titles. So they totally blow off the tag team champions and they say, we want to be added to the women's match and make it a four-way at Stand and Deliver. And so, you know, on the show, I pointed out, golly, talk about burying the tag team champions and not wanting the belts at all. And, you know, Cora Jade should be angry, but she's not. That doesn't make any sense. And then all I heard was, well, Brian, obviously J.C. Jane is injured. She's hurt. So they can't do a tag team match. That's why they did this. Mm, I remember I heard that. I remember hearing how wrong I was. Well, last night they announced that, in fact, J.C. Jane and G.G. Dolan are working this weekend. They're on the kickoff show. They're wrestling. They'll be facing, of all people, hated rivals who are now just suddenly friends again, Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez, with the NXT Women Tag Team Championships on the line. What do you think of this lineup, Jim? Are uh, Nikki Lyons and Lash Legend, are they on it too? No. They made okay. it clear that's uh, after the show. That's after, okay. Yeah, next week. It's probably for the best. Um, I think it'll be a good show. I think there'll be lots of good matches. I mean, there's a ton of talent on NXT. I mean, obviously, they're setting up this WrestleMania for, for Braun Breaker. And, you know, for as far as the other titles go, honestly, it's pretty much a toss up. I would imagine that Toxic Attraction has got to probably continue their reign of terror a little while longer. At least that's what it feels like. But the men's titles really could go anywhere. So that's the lineup for Saturday. And yeah, if you're uh, talking about this for a while, this pro wrestling is like it's it's uh, it's very much a uh, I would say it's a popular niche with each promotion having their own niche group of fans and uh, those fans being super served. So if you're a WWE fan, man, what is Saturday you're going to have? 9 a.m. to noon NXT, get a couple hours to do, I don't know, whatever. And then uh, four and a half hours of WrestleMania, five and a half at the pre-show. Back in a moment, NXT Report Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Jim Valley joining us here today. And yes, everyone, it is official. Saturday. You know, at the beginning of the show, I say, we're here every day. Well, we are now here Every day again, Jim. Monday through Friday, myself, Mike Sempervivi. Saturday, 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern. Jim Valley returns this weekend, going head-to-head with NXT. And, of course, Andrew Zarian on Sundays. Excited to be back, Jim? Yes. Oh, I didn't realize NXT was at the same time. I'm, can I cancel? Nope. Ah, oh, damn. No, that'll be great. I'm looking you can do live that. play-by-play, brother. Look, give me something to do. Put it on the on. background. Tell us what's happening on this show. Yeah, no. Tell be... us how long the video packages are. Oh, geez, I don't have that kind of time. I look at an hour. Hey, listen. I'm gonna. I got to go through this. Uh, I don't want to take away any of your time, Jim. But uh, I, I got to get into this. I'm gonna go over this NXT report. Feel free to jump in if you want to. But I need to get over this report because I got something I got to read from ESPN, and I got to talk about it. So, let's get going. It opened up with Imperium. Gunter, Marcel Bartel, and Fabian Eichner beating L.A. Knight and MSK in a six-man tag. And, of course, Imperium are the tag team champions. And I could not help but notice that they won. They pinned Nash Carter. 
So uh, there's a number of potential reasons for that. And we could talk about that this weekend. But Imperium got the win there. I thought it was a very good match. Hard to not have a good match. The only downside was the fans who hate MSK and they hate the name Gunther. And so they're just going to chant whatever they want. And it takes away from the matches. And, uh, you know, local chants on a national show. Whatever. Not my favorite, but there you go. We had Kaylee and EO bickering backstage, which was ridiculous because, uh, you know, Kaylee goes... You know, the best woman is going to win. And so EO goes, yeah, it's going to be me. And Kaylee is completely taken aback. I, I can't believe that you would say that you're better than me. As some of these backstage interviews, brother, holy smokes. Uh, Dakota Kai found uh, Wendy Chu's pillow all torn up backstage. She's now missing because on NXT people go missing regularly. We had Ivy He's, Nile. It's been what, like two weeks since a kidnapping story? Yeah, they, they, they were, were due a kidnapping. Man, wrestling kidnapping. Ivy Nile beat Tiffany Stratton. They practiced this match nonstop for a week, and uh, it was fine. I mean, it only went like maybe two and a half, three minutes, but they didn't screw anything up. I mean, it's this is not really how you learn how to work, but, I mean, if you're going to be doing one show a week and it's going to be on national television, you do what you got to do. And uh, Ivy Nile beat her after a distraction from Sarai. So, uh, you know, it was fine. Everything you'd expect out of a WWE match. Short, choreographed, distraction finish. That's uh, NXT 2.0. We had a Ciampa promo where he goes, you know, everyone thinks it might be the end this weekend for Tommaso Ciampa in NXT. And then literally at the end of the thing, he folds up a chair and it says uh, September 9, 2015 to April 2nd, 2022. <laughs> so I guess he's done after this weekend. We had a uh, we had we had video packages with Ziggler and Braun Breaker, which were very good, uh, building up the main event. Storyline is uh, you know Braun Breaker is a hardworking, tough guy. He's first in, last out, works his ass off, lives, breathes NXT. Ziggler's a guy from the main roster that flies in, does his stuff, and gets out as quickly as possible. Doesn't care, you know he's the big superstar. Everybody wants to talk to him. Nobody wants to talk about Braun Breaker and the, you know as they do all of the uh, media and everything like that. Maybe because the media knows they're not allowed to ask Braun Breaker about his dad. I never thought about that, but that might be why. But they were good. Briggs and Jensen faced Legato del Fantasma. And uh, they won. And it was all right. And uh, all I can really add about this is uh, Brooks Jensen, whose gimmick is he's a virgin nerd. Now, this character is not getting him over. Nobody cared when he was getting beaten on. But hey, gotta keep giving these guys personalities, even if they're of dorks. Indy and Persia did a absolutely comically horrific interview segment backstage. They're going to do some sort of thing at the show. Fans are going to vote about what couple's hotter. Awful. Whew. Holy smokes. Terrible acting. I was waiting for someone to deliver a pizza. Acting was really bad. Yeah, people are confused here. You guys don't watch NXT 2.0? His gimmick is he's a virgin nerd. That's his gimmick. It's... I'm not even being, like, sarcastic. That's actually his gimmick. He's never been with a woman. He he admits it, and he's a total nerd. That's his gimmick. What do you want me to do about it? Then we had Toxic Attraction doing a promo about uh, the show on Sunday, and, uh, and uh, JC and... Uh, JC Jane and Gigi Dolan are out there and Dakota Kai comes to the ring because they beat up Wendy Chu they all beat her up and then Raquel Gonzalez of all people make the save and then uh, Raquel and Dakota who had a blood feud a blood feud with two hated rivals they square off and they hug and they're friends and they're facing JC and Gigi on Saturday Von Wagner beat Bodie Hayward and uh, they had uh, this uh, new woman out there watching. And they actually said her name this time. Her name is... Um... Help me out, Jim. What's her name? God, I don't remember. Doesn't matter. It'll matter when she's on the main roster in about three weeks. But it uh, doesn't matter now. Then we had Joe Gacy beating Draco Anthony. This was a it's horror. Bluxton. That's what, is that what the chat says? What's her name? <clears throat> I it's not nothing. Bluxton Pungsley. Oh, okay. Stop. And it's not Fallon Henley either. Okay. Golly, you people. Anyway, 
Uh, Joe Gacy, Draco Anthony was not good at all. Uh, God bless Draco Anthony. I'm sure he's a great guy. But when you look at, like, the NXT 2.0 roster on national television, as far as, like, the number one greenest person who absolutely is not ready for TV, God bless him, it's Draco Anthony. And they botched the first spot, and it was off to the races from there. And Joe Gacy won. Crowd was absolutely dead. And it went a long, long time. Nikita Lyons beat Sloan Jacobs quickly. You know what's funny is when I saw the name Sloan Jacobs, I thought, eh, that's a pretty normal name, nothing weird about it. Then I say it and I'm like, Sloan Jacobs is her name. She lost to Nikita Lyons. And then uh, Lash Legend appeared on the Titan Tron, and they have unfinished business to settle after stand and deliver. I hope they've been practicing this one for about a month. Because that could we'll be. See, uh, I mean, Nikita Lyons has a lot of strikes. So I'm hopeful that that will be good for Lash Legend, that she can just sell strikes as opposed to something else. Because she's, it's amazing to me. It really speaks to how difficult wrestling is as a craft, as an art form. Seriously. I'm when well someone, aware. A world-class athlete like Lash Legend can't grasp it yet that she can't just pick it up and i'm not ripping on lash legend i'm just saying you know we're i'm sure she respects the craft but people watching should also respect the craft the fact that someone of her athletic ability and pedigree can't just pick it up sophia cromwell by the way i'll talk about that in a second jim because i got more Everybody to say Everybody sounds that. like they are a cop show in the 70s basically then the main event was Cameron Grimes, A Kid, and Roderick Strong. Uh, triple threat match. Uh, Cameron Grimes won. Match was great. I know you're surprised. And that brings us to what I want to talk about. I rushed through this because I got to talk about this. So I thought this show was was uh, it was pretty good. You know what you're getting when you watch NXT 2.0. But you know what I couldn't help but notice for like the 80th time? Well, what was the headline match? Cameron Grimes, longtime worker. A Kid, longtime worker. Well, given how long he's been doing it. Roderick Strong, really longtime worker. And they had, you know, a fantastic match. What was the other really good match? Oh, we had Imperium, which consists of Valter, longtime great worker, Marcel and Fabian and LA Knight and Nash Carter, all workers. They went out there and they just had a tremendous opener and then we had a great main event. And uh, then what else do we have? Ivy Nile and Ivy Nile and Tiffany Stratton. It was all right when they practiced for an entire week and went two minutes. And then, you know, Brooks and Jensen. I mean, that was all right because you had Legato Del Fantasma in there. But, I mean, Briggs and Brooks, they're not bringing a whole lot to the table at this point. And then Von Wagner and Bodie Hayward was just, it existed. Uh, Joe Gacy and Draco Anthony was, like, aggressively not good. It was, you know, that would have been a bad match on any shows I used to work on. And it was on national television. And same thing, Nikita, uh, Nikita Lyons and Sloan Jacobs, long-time practice match, squash, a minute, and that's it. So I'm, I'm watching this this show, and it's like, it's so obvious what the best things on this show are and what the worst things on the show are. And the best things on the show are the things involving professional wrestlers. People experienced in professional wrestling here on this professional wrestling show. And the worst stuff is the volleyball players and the basketball players and the gymnasts and the football players and the people that lift weights who are now being asked way too early to be pro wrestlers on national television. So then I read this article. It's on the front page of uh, WrestlingObserver.com. In an interview with ESPN focusing on their NIL program, and specifically college football players, WWE Senior Vice President of Global Talent Strategy and Development, James Kimball, talked about how they're focusing on young talent to sign, especially in athletics, and gave interesting insights to what they're looking for. We would like the age number to come down, especially on the developmental standpoint. The second you enter our developmental program, and then potentially end up on NXT and then on a Raw or SmackDown, we want that number to be 25, not 30 or 35. Never mind whether you're a good athlete. Or, which we got to, you got to be young. Otherwise, you're just we're not going to look at you. Uh, he says uh, they're sporting athletes who are looking to achieve their college goals before coming to WWE. Even if you come to WWE and you're 23, 24, 25, that's a significant improvement 
or over what has historically been the case with some of our developmental talent. They don't like all these, you know, wrestlers who showed up that were too old, even though they could wrestle. We're able to develop them in an accelerated manner. Get them. We're able to develop them in an accelerated manner. Get them to WrestleMania or Raw, do media training, do community events, all these initial exposures to the business. Those are done when you're still in school. Then you go to Orlando, and off you go. What is their wish list for, for signees? They want you to be physical, look, size, athleticism, strength, and personality, public speaking, charisma, character range, willingness to be coached. <laughs> like... You know, I, I don't know who this guy is. Kimball. Who is this guy? What's his name? James Kimball. I'm sure he's a nice guy, but you know what he isn't? He's not a pro wrestler. And uh, and so he's he's like, I'm sure been indoctrinated at a WWE. And this idea that, hey, Kimball, you know, we need young athletes that are good athletes. And we don't want them older than 25. We don't want them to have any wrestling experience. We want them to be good looking and athletic. And then we will rush them to NXT in the main roster, and they're going to be ready to go. Do we have any evidence that this has ever worked yet? I mean, I know you could probably say, well, Braun Breaker. Bro, Braun Breaker is a second-generation pro wrestler. He grew up with the Steiners. Do we have any evidence that this has worked one time? And now this is like the whole recruitment process. We don't want any pro wrestlers. Never mind on our developmental show. The only good stuff involves pro wrestlers. But we've got to get all these athletes because, man, we can teach anybody to wrestle fast. Just get them in there and rush them through. They're already. That's what they're saying here. We knew this, but now they're saying it. Anyway. Sorry, oh, no, Jim. Hold on. WWE. Hold that thought. Observer Live. Yes, Jim. Brian. Yeah. Saturday. Yes. 10 o'clock. Yes. Sports byline. Head to head. Head to head with uh, NXT. We'll see if we can. I don't know. Am I going to be on Twitch? I don't know. Yeah, of course you are. Why wouldn't you Okay. Be? So then we'll have all the Twitch homies, all the chat, and all the fun. And I just want people to know. Do you want to know why I'm coming back, Brian? Because no one ever retires, Jim. That, and it's because of the fans. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's because of each and every one of you. Well, Who I'm sure... Points to the crowd, turns in a circle. I'm sure the F4W universe right now, Jim, is chanting, you deserve it. Yes. Hashtag, because of the fans, Brian. Because of the fans. Wait a second, was, you're supposed to be a babyface. It's the heels that say it's because of the fans. But that was my gimmick. I've, I've uh, trademarked that for years. I see. Every month when somebody turns because of the fans, people always hashtag because of the fans. Well, that's, that's the one heel promo that they've got. It's because of you fans. That's right. Golly. It's because of the fans. So God help eight, uh, 10 o'clock Saturday morning, Wrestling Observer Live. By the way, that's 10 Pacific. Right. Yes, one Eastern. Thank you. Yeah, one Not Eastern, yes. For most of you, most of you is going to be one o'clock. Right. It's most of you are just going to download it, but yes. No, no. Didn't you not read the chat? They ain't watching NXT 2.0. Right, so I want people in the chat, and we'll uh, have some fun. Yeah. So that's the plan, everybody. We're now back every day. And I guess I got to probably, you know, talk to the other folks. We got a lot of people we got to talk to when things change. And I forget yeah. most of them half the time, so I apologize. It's but anyway, a big operation now. it is a big operation, much much larger than myself. And I also do this because of you fans. And we're out of time. I want to thank Jim, Mike, Dom, callers and listeners, everybody in the studio. Talk to you again next time. Wrestling Observer Live.